Now we delve into recording there for, for just a little bit, and I know that you guys are over at Christ Memorial um, are doing a simulcast to another room, right. and you're doing video recording. And in fact, in the last probably two years, you've really progressed forward in that video area, right. correct? Well, yeah, we've taken huge strides from a couple of personal cameras um, trying to send a signal and decent video, but uh, just not the quality. To we ha now have a three-camera um, studio set up, which yep. is uh, wonderful, enjoyable. Um, I actually have two people on camera, and the third one I use as a stationary shot. Safety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it actually, I'd like to say safety, but it uh, just gives me an extra option because I tend sure. to use, I tend to keep it uh, as a full shot of the choir mm -hmm. because our choir is off to one side, so we can't use it as a safety for everything else oh, up front. Oh, sure. Yes. Uh, because of the way our sanctuary is arranged. Yep. Yep. But what that allows me is during the speaking parts, um, there's not a lot of creativity that you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're following the person. Right. So two cameras on them, uh, usually one of the two cameras is going to have a good shot, no mm -hmm. problem. But once we get to the choir, then there's a little more interest in uh, creativity as opposed sure. to just a wide shot of the choir. Yeah. That gets pretty boring. Yep. Uh, but if I have um, just two cameras, one of them is going to be wide, the other one's going to be having to try and do everything for me. Right. So if I have three cameras, I can have my wide shot, and then I sure. can have the other two taking turns doing one will do a pan, the other mm -hmm. one will do tight on the, on the director. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, you know, and, and I can change angles that way. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's one angle is always the specialty, the right. other angle is always the wide shot. Yeah. And that, th sure. no, mo <laughs> no more creativity there either. <laughs> right. Kind of like this shot we have here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying anything about your shot here, Gary. Yeah, exactly. Well, hopefully the creativity is in the discussion that's right. here. We'll, we'll yeah. hope that that's, that's the kept them interested. <laughs> exactly. Now, recording uh, audio for either recording, you know, uh, to CD or, you know, to post on the web, um, and also audio for video, mm -hmm. um, you know, I kind of lump those both together because you're right. looking for the same, same kind of result. You know, there's some huge challenges there. Um, Talk to me a little bit about you know what you've run into and, and um, you know successes and, mm -hmm. and share your failures because right, we all right. can learn from yep. those as yep. well. <laughs> yeah. Well, we uh, have even since before I even got to Christ Memorial, uh, the recording, the CD recording has been on a Neumann mic uh, hung from the catwalk uh, in the sanctuary. So we just pick it all up. Hmm. Um, nice for the musical parts and for the most part I mean, even that gets a bit echoey because you sure. only want so much yeah. Yeah, yeah, on whole, it whole but, room. but uh, if the front of house is mixing well then you'll probably get a decent recording of that part of it uh, but then when you go to the vocal uh, the speakers anybody talking it's just you know terrible um, <laughs> yeah that, that room noise is something about mm -hmm. feeling like you're in a really really big room right you know and right. particularly if you're listening on audio only because your mind doesn't have any uh, visual to right. give, it the, give it the cue uh, that it's there in fact uh, I'll uh, tell a little little story here because I thought this was really good um, a guy that I know that uh, did mix for audio and they had a, a mix for a recording and um, uh, recording audio for their CDs and so forth uh, and he had a complete separate mix that mm -hmm. he did. And what he would do is he'd use the ambient mic a bit, you know, during the congregational singing and right. choir and that type of stuff. And then when uh, uh, the pastor got up and started preaching, he would very slowly bring that right. ambient mic out. So it wasn't yep. like he went from, you know, being in this live environment to, okay, we're in this, you know, tight little, you know, exactly. kind of, you know, also the person's like right there, you know, kind of stuff. But he would he would do that. And I know you've got tricks and stuff yeah, like well, that you're, that you do. You're, you're speaking exactly uh, one of the, you said one of the challenges, and that's, uh, we were talking volunteers before, and now we're talking challenges on uh, recording. Sure. Uh, the two together is exactly what you just said, fading slowly. Mm. Um, yeah. Getting, getting used to the idea that you need the house mic um, up during congregational singing, uh, uh, things happening where you need to be able to hear some of the congregation in it. Um, otherwise it just seems dry, mm -hmm. is important. Uh, even in the simulcast down to another area where they are singing, we need, need to make sure that they're getting uh, congregation 
because otherwise they feel they don't feel in, engaged. They feel like they're just a separate little group singing by themselves. They don't mm -hmm. feel like they're singing with the congregation. Sure. Yeah. So we need to make sure yeah. they get that. Um, yeah. Uh, getting the volunteer to understand when to use house mic, when not to use house mic is challenging because they'll forget to turn it off and then you've got no advantage of having a direct um, feed. Sure. Because you've got that direct feed but you still got the whole house mic. Right, mic, so exactly. So there's no advantage. Yes. Um, so drilling it into their head, turn it off when you're not using it, turn it off when you're not using it, or bring it down. Yep. Um, but then the other half, what you just said, fading it out slowly. Yeah. Uh, you know, house mic. Wham! Right. It's like, <laughs> you know, it goes from house echo to gone. Right, exactly. And yep. Uh, yep. I, that's, that's, I probably, now that you're saying it, uh, one of the key things that I think um, front of house and uh, recording, uh, mixing for recording, is subtlety. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, subtly, subtlety in everything, um, because if you are too sudden, too quick with it, then everybody notices it. And the goal of our profession is if we're doing our job well, nobody knows we did our job. Exactly. And if you're not subtle and you're pulling that up and down too fast, uh, <laughs> they'll know you did something. Yep. So, and we don't want that. Yep. Yeah, particularly when you're uh, mixing live and in a room. Yeah, I've told uh, everybody that I train that if you miss a cue, immediately pull a fader down to zero, unmute it, and then you know slowly right. fade it back right. in. Yes. Because you know, in the natural reaction, and I even do this. Oh, it isn't on. And you want to hit that mute button, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, well, everybody knows it wasn't on, you know, right. kind of thing, whether that it was just a little too soft. Right. Now, obviously, exactly. in recording, you know, if you miss it, they're they're not there, you know, right. and fading it in makes it more tolerable, probably, right. coming back. That's when you need a fast fade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fast <laughs> but fade even then, fade. I don't right. like to cut it on because, right. you know. Yeah, that, that who, jump. Yeah, yeah. It, that jump of nothing to all of a sudden there. Um, you don't know, was that person coming in real loud? And so now we went from they didn't hear a word to blasting them out. <laughs> Let, let's bring yeah. it in subtly. But, but yeah. yeah, there's no, way, no hiding that on a live feed. Yeah, it makes me laugh. I can see, you know, if you miss a mic, you got maybe 10 seconds there, which is an eternity. I can see the guy sitting at his computer at work listening to the message at lunch or something. And all of a sudden, you know, and music gets done and the pastor gets up and he doesn't hear the pastor. He goes, hmm, must not be loud enough. You know, he's over, <laughs> turns his volume, you know, wide open. And then the sound, you know, yeah. the guy doing sound for video figures it out about 10 seconds into it, does that, you know, yeah. boom, on. And, you know, maybe that's a new way to evangelize in the workplace, you know, and just <laughs> turn yeah, it up loud. Just miss the, miss the cue regularly. I yeah. don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, that won't work. Then, then, of course, the flip side, muting it when they're done. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. accidental, oh, I missed that one on to Sure. Uh, we know that one from the president and everybody else. Yeah, exactly. Too many exactly. accidental mics left on. Yep, yep, exactly. So. And we don't want to uh, create an embarrassing situation for anybody or just the lack of professionalism. You know, it's there right. like, you know, even I have it, and I've done this before, is when we do the greeting time, somebody will be by me and they'll greet me and I'll forget to turn the pastor's mic off. And all right. of a sudden I hear him say, hey, Bob, good morning. I'm like, oh, you yeah. know, quick fade it down. Uh, and that, and that goes back to what it is we're trying to do, and that is to um, further the worship service, not yeah. to detract from it. And as soon as everybody hears the pastor or, or anybody say something, mm -hmm. even if it's not compromising, you right. know, just, as soon as they hear that, they're immediately focused yeah. on that, yeah. Yeah. took yep. them right out of the worship for a moment. Yep, yep, so. exactly, definitely. Well, you have a very technical setup, and I don't want to...